Hello everyone, and I hope all of you guys are feeling well and ready for the fifth and final session of our five-day training. And I would like to apologize right away from my, for my croaky voice. The thing is, I have a sore throat, but I couldn't really back away from my part of the training today because today I'm going to talk about one of the most favorable topics of mine, which is time management. It's part of our training today. So let's go to the next slide. And I would like to first introduce myself. My name is uh, Danny Spugach. If you don't know me yet, I'm head of the interpretation department at our company, Coinset. I have a master's degree in philology. I have been translating, interpreting for the last, I guess, 20 plus years. And I have been working with this company for the last four years plus. Also, I own my and run my own publishing house. I'm a private investor and I have become a private investor here thanks to this company. Before that, investing was uh, some kind of a far, far away profession, trade or hobby to pursue that was not for us mere mortals. Whereas I realized that anyone can become a private investor if they have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of um, adventuring spirit in themselves, because investing, I remind you, is always associated with risks. If someone tells you, like, invest in this, it's a 100% guarantee, most probably they are lying or they want your money. And I'm also a crypto enthusiast because crypto, although it is a very high risk investment, it is an investment nevertheless. So let's go to the next slide, please. And first things first, let me uh, read out the disclaimer because it is very important to know what to do and how to treat this particular webinar. And uh, yeah, I will read it out for you. The information and training materials provided in this presentation are for educational and informational purposes only. So they are not intended to be a uh, substitute or placement for professional, financial, legal, or business advice. The content presented here is subject to change and may not cover all aspects of the topic discussed. While the aim is to provide valuable insights and strategies, outcomes depend on various factors, including individual effort, market conditions, and economic variables. variables. So always consult with qualified professionals for specific advice tailored to your situation and participation in any training or implementation of any strategies discussed is at your own risk. So we're done with that part. And now we can move on to the next one, which is, I believe, yeah, our interview. So here I would like you guys to share your aha moments, moments of realization from the previous session. And I would favor someone from the Russian or Spanish room because we already had a lot of students we spoke to during previous, session, previous sessions from the English room. So guys, if there, is, if there is anyone willing to share their aha moments, to share what kind of homework they did, you are welcome to do so. I'll give you a couple of seconds, minutes, because I know there is a relay between different languages. So for my words to be conveyed to all other rooms. It takes a little bit of time, although we are being translated simultaneously. So let's see if we have anyone. Meanwhile, I'll drink my tea with honey to alleviate the pain in my throat. Anyone? Uh, Spanish, Russian rooms? Because if we don't have anyone there, I will have to go back to our plan B, which is 
Okay, I see Chris. But Chris, let's um, give another chance to the Russian and uh, Spanish rooms, okay? Should I count to three or something, like, or 10? Spanish? Nothing? <laughs> okay, we have Sharon. Yeah, Sharon yesterday, by the way, uh, was our speaker. And um, I guess it doesn't mean that she is not a student of our course uh, too. So I guess, yeah, let's um, uh, listen to Sharon because I'm sure she has quite a lot of valuable information to share with us. So yeah, Sharon, we give you the floor, right? Go for it. And let me see if you can, um, dear moderators, can you please give the mic to Sharon? All right, can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, we me? Can. We can. Can, can see me okay? <laughs> and now we can see you too, yes. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah, I just uh, go face. through, uh, sorry, go through the, you know, standard routine. Introduce yourself, please. Tell us uh, sure. where, yeah, where you're from and so on and so forth. For those people who, for some crazy reason, might not know who you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dennis, for the invitation to uh, share a bit of feedback. My name is Sharon Fairfall. I'm from Perth, Western Australia. I am a, a top um, top leader in our region for Australia and Oceania, as well as a vice president in the partner program. I've been working uh, around the new group. All of the uh, wonderful changes we've had along the way have been so um, exciting and uh, evolutionary. <laughs> Sorry, for those um, who don't know what NEW is, it stands for New Economic Evolution of the World, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I'm very passionate about the, the new economic evolution of the world. And I remember the first time hearing it, you know, it really rang true in my ears and in my heart and it, 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 I caught the vision of it. And um, I love it. You know, I think it's beautiful. It's a wonderful opportunity and we can all embrace it and, and create it together. So that's why I'm still here after six and a bit years now. <laughs> aren't we all? Uh, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, so... Um, yeah, so it's a little bit about me. Um, the homework that I did, um, I was sort of like trying to um, redo my social media today. I looked at my LinkedIn profile and thought, oh, that is, there's some updates that need to happen there. I looked at, you know, my Instagram. I looked at my Facebook um, and I thought, um they do need some work. So uh, although they seem quite good and, and maybe people, other people might think they're very good, to me they're not good enough. So I'm, I'm doing some more work on those. And uh, I created a new reel today in Facebook Reels and that uh, you can automatically share that to Instagram as well. Mm. So I did one of those. Uh, so I posted that in the group so you can all have a look at that and give me some feedback and tell me what you think. Was it good? Was it? Does it need a bit of tweaking? Was it clear? Was there a strong message in there? Was there a call to action? Uh, so from my homework, maybe you could do, do some feedback on that and critique me uh, so that I'm always improving and, and uh, getting better as well. Um, so that was my homework. I did have some business appointments today and uh, some Zooms and things like that and uh, working, you know, with a with a client in marketing. And so, yeah, I was quite busy. So I, I did a little bit today. Um, so you're my, basically uh, like putting the knowledge to practice. Yes. Yeah, did absolutely. you already use some of the techniques that we've discussed during the previous and the day before that? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, putting all of those into practice and uh, looking at how do I, um, I'm now trying to work out how to best manage the, um, the content calendar and be a bit more on point with my posts. I'm, I'm very sporadic. I just, you know, if I, I feel like I want to post something, I post something and I might not post for a few days or sometimes a week. And then I oh. sort of go back and think, oh, I need to By be more way. consistent. I think today's session probably will help you out a little bit because today we have, Good. among other things, like time management, goal setting. We will go always back to this topic of goal setting because it's so important. So probably you will kind of revisit your whole approach to 
organizing your day. And uh, I think a lot of things will stop being sporadic or chaotic or, you know, unorganized. Tell us about your aha good. moments. Uh, so my aha moments, um, really what was the most important thing to me Um the most important thing to me is about the team and and how do we um, reinvigorate the team and and re-inspire our team. And so I'm looking at strategies around that. You know, how do we get people, you know, to fall in love again with our movement? And I know there was uh, we had so many passionate people. Um, I don't know if it's a time zone. Maybe it's because it's on late here in my country. Uh, we're not getting, you know, all of the people that I know should be here with us. So, um, you know, perhaps look at recreating. How do we recreate that for our local communities is kind of, you know, what what I'm realising is um, an aha moment that, okay, if it is to be, it's up to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like who else is going to do this? Like I would love to have, you know, people, you know, busting to get in and, and be a part of it. But I think we just, you know, need to reinvigorate and and uh, inspire ourselves. You know, we, we are the leaders. So when we inspire yeah. ourselves, you know, then we can inspire others. So um, my aha moment is to work on me, <laughs> to be the yeah. best version of yeah. me, and then to project that to others and help others. Yeah, they, well, that, that's that's what they say. Like, if you want to change the world, start with yourself. So before blaming yeah. others or blaming these circumstances. We should first work on ourselves, of course. And another, like you said that there were a few people, not few, not the usual big amount of people attending, but one of the ways to overcome it is to simply recommend the, or give the link to the recordings of our trainings on YouTube. And then people, if it's really for some people, 10 PM might be already too late. And by the way, it is normal that 10 p.m. is already too late because we all work according to our biological clock. And no matter what they say, that some people are larks and others are owls. No, like the evolution does not work that way. We've like part of the animal kingdom and we start working when the sun rises up and not like the (laughs) other uh, way around. So for some people, when they go to bed at 10 p.m. Um, yeah, they can, um, in this case, watch the recording. They won't be able to actively interact with the trainer or ask their questions, but it's better than nothing, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And we do share those in our Facebook groups and in our Action yeah. Taker group. So we're sharing all the recordings. So yes, we're, we're definitely doing that. So that's wonderful. And what about your recommendations to other participants? Or was it already part of the recommendation from Point 3? Well, pretty pretty much, um, yes, all of the above. And um, but but you know, don't give up. You know what I would recommend is don't give up. You know, find your passion and find your purpose, and uh, pick a project that you really love. And and if you can't do all of them, you know, just do one and do that well. And of course, you know, with our Coinset community, uh, we do have um, a range of projects you know, within that community. But then if you wanted to pick, say, Evercent or EPU or FNT or um, the RPG games, I know Dennis is very passionate about this one. It's great to see your leadership here. Really, really loving your passion in this area. So, um, yeah, you know, find people you can work with and duplicate what you do and, you know, do it with all your heart, you know, share share the love. (laughs) Well, thank you very much, Sharon. You uh, you came to our rescue <laughs> and with <laughs> quite deep insights too. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, finally, we can start our training. That's what we came here for, right? Yes. Okay, so Thanks, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. And let's go to the next slide, please. So let's briefly go through our agenda. So first, we are going to talk about effective time management from A to Z. This is the topic that I'm going to cover along with the next topic, which is cultivating productive habits and reducing time wasters. And then we will have our lovely Mila Surdukova who will cover points three, four, and five, which is achieving work-life harmony, developing a growth mindset, and building resilience and maintaining a positive attitude. And of course, 
as I said on Monday, I think it wouldn't be a training if we didn't have some homework for you. And remember that you do that homework for your own benefit, not for someone else's, not to check the box and say, yeah, I did it. You do it to improve your knowledge. And also by doing homework, you get the opportunity to immediately put your freshly obtained knowledge into practice. Although, yeah, it might be like in a laboratory environment, but then when you start applying that practice or that homework in real life, then your laboratory environment suddenly will look like very much to the real world. It's like they say, I don't know whether there is this saying in Russian that it's hard during train ship, but train ship, but it's easy during the battle, meaning that you put a lot of hard effort into training. And then all of a sudden you realize that, yeah, it's easy peasy. And uh, that's what I've been training for. So, okay. So guys, um, enough of agenda. Let's go to the next slide, please. So effective time management. Okay. I guess that first we need to define what time management is. And I would say that Time management is the process of planning and controlling how much time we spend on specific activities to achieve our goals effectively. So this is the definition. And then good time management enables us to work smarter and not harder. So we finish more quickly our job and then we can move on to the next task. And time management, I'd say, is one of the most crucial skills that individuals must develop to lead a successful and productive life. And demands coming from work, family, and personal life can often feel overwhelming, which leads to stress and emotional burnout. And by learning and implementing time management, we can alleviate some of this stress and find time to focus on the things that truly matter to us, family, among other things. And today we will first try to understand why time management is important and identify the benefits of effective time management. And then we will break down time management techniques, methods, to see what kind of tools um, and resources can uh, help you in your time management journey. And finally, we will discuss how to cultivate productive habits and reduce our time wasters, time wasting habits. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, the importance of time management. Uh, time management skills are essential for several reasons. First, it helps us become more productive and efficient. When we can effectively manage our time, we can accomplish more tasks in less time, which ultimately leads to increased personal and professional success. Second, time management skills help us reduce stress and reduce anxiety. And when we feel overwhelmed, by the sheer number of tasks we need to complete, our stress levels rise and our mental and emotional well-being start to suffer. And by managing our time effectively, we can prioritize our tasks, set realistic deadlines, and then create more balanced workload, which again, ultimately reduces the levels of stress and anxiety. Third, uh, increased quality of work. So when we manage our time effectively, we don't have to rush through tasks or we don't have to complete multiple tasks at the same time. And this, again, improves considerably the quality of our work. And moreover, when you're not under time pressure, like time crunch, there is a much, much lower chance that you will make a mistake. Fourth, Effective time management means you don't have to make rushed decisions. Or in other words, it improves your decision-making process. You have enough time to analyze and to consider 
all of your options and avoid making impulsive decisions that you might or you might not regret at a later stage. Fifth, effective time management helps you avoid missing your deadlines, which again helps boost your reputation at your workplace and also increase your feeling of self-worth, of your self-confidence, self-esteem. And lastly, time management skills are crucial for achieving a healthy work-life balance. And when we effectively allocate our time between personal and professional responsibilities, we have the much desired time for self-care, for relaxation, and for spending quality time with our family, with our loved ones. And a healthy work-life balance is simply essential for staying well and happy. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, this one. Yeah, I didn't see it change. Sorry. Yo, yo, well, we are on the right slide. So now that we know that time management is very important, uh, let's take it, uh, a look at various techniques and strategies for managing our time effectively. But please, before we do that, remember that these techniques may not work equally for everyone because everyone has their own individual preferences and everyone has their own work styles. So what I would suggest is that you experiment with different time management techniques and then find the approach that suits your needs and that enhances your productivity, that matches your work style best. And today, we'll give a more thorough look at the first four techniques with some practical examples. And then I want you to look into the last four yourselves. Dig a little bit, because, you know, this whole idea comes from my English grammar professor at the university. So uh, whenever we ask her like a question, she would always say, I want you to find the answer to that question and share it with us uh, next time. And of course, at the time, we weren't very happy to hear that answer. But many years later, it kind of dawned on me that she was giving us a life lesson too. Means that if you want something, you need to put efforts into getting it, which makes the desired outcome, the desired uh, result even sweeter and more valuable. So we can go to the next slide and discuss the first technique. Yes, the first technique would be setting clear goals. Setting clear goals provides focus and it provides direction for your efforts. So when you have clear goals, you know exactly what you're working towards. You get a kind of a benchmark for measuring, tracking your progress. And this helps you stay on track. And also it ensures that your time is used effectively. And when setting goals, it has been said already on numerous occasions, we should remember the SMART criteria, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So here's a couple of non-SMART and SMART goals in comparison. So instead of saying, I want to sign up more people, Aim for a SMART goal, like I want to sign up 10 new members within the next 30 days. So it is specific because it clearly states the desired result, which is signing up 10 new team members. It is measurable, it is achievable, it is relevant, and it is time-bound. It matches all five criteria. Now, another not uh, SMART goal would be, I want to make more sales. Whereas the SMART goal would be, I will increase my monthly sales by 20% compared to the previous month. Again, instead of simply, it's the next uh, example, instead of simply wanting a higher rank, get yourself a SMART goal. Like, I want to achieve the rank of manager by Christmas, which is totally doable. And every time you set yourself a goal, make sure those goals meet all five criteria. 
Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. The Eisenhower matrix, I guess. This is one my favorite one. The Eisenhower matrix is a very useful method for prioritizing tasks. So this matrix was derived from a quote by the US President Dwight Eisenhower, who liked to say, what is important is seldom urgent, and what is urgent is self seldom important. So this method divides tasks into four categories, urgent and important, important, but not urgent, urgent, but not important, and neither urgent nor important. And by focusing on most critical tasks first, you can manage your time more effectively. So let's see how an MLCI professional can apply the Eisenhower matrix. An important and urgent task would be to follow up with potential leads who have expressed interest in joining your MLCI business. This is a time-sensitive task that requires your immediate attention, hence urgent, in order for you to capitalize on the opportunity. An important but not urgent task would be to develop a comprehensive training program for your downline team to enhance their skills, to enhance their knowledge or their experience in product, et cetera. So while this task is important for your long-term success, it does not or may not have an immediate deadline. An urgent but not important task uh, would be to respond to not critical emails or messages from your team members or from your customers, because it is necessary to address these tasks promptly, but they might not contribute to achieving your MLCI goals. And finally, a not important and not urgent task would be to organize your workspace or update your social media profiles, like, uh, by the way, um, Sharon told us she did. So it might fall into the non urgent and not important task, but it's a task anyways, and we have to address it sooner or later. So these tasks may not directly impact the success of your MLCI business, but again, it is they are important in the long run. So you might either do it later or even you can delegate the non-urgent, not important tasks to someone else. So the next uh, time management method is the Pomodoro technique. It's on the next slide. Let's go. Okay, yes. And this technique was developed by the Francesco Cirillo in the late 1980s. So what it does, it helps people increase the amount of work they can do in shorter amounts of time. And the principle of the Pomodoro technique is quite simple. We break our work into intervals, typically 25 minutes. And they're called Pomodoros. And then they are followed by short breaks. And to ensure that you take those breaks, you should set a timer on your phone or a kitchen timer that would tell you when to stop. And Cirillo, by the way, used a kitchen timer shaped like a tomato. And that's why this technique is called the Pomodoro technique because Pomodoro in Italian means a tomato. So this technique aims to improve focus, productivity and time management because you use short bursts of concentrated work. And many people think that Longer periods of concentration will help you get done more work. But the reality is that the longer we are in those concentrated states, the more we lose track of time. And this means that doing tasks might take longer time than we intend to. And there are six major steps to the Pomodoro technique. First, identify a task or tasks that you need to complete. Second, set a timer for 25 minutes. Third, work on a task with no distractions. Fourth, when the alarm sounds, take a five-minute break. 
and fifth, repeat the process three more times. And finally, six, take a longer 30 minute break and then start all over. And here's a real life example of how the Pomodoro technique can be applied. Let's say you have a list of tasks to complete for your MLCI business, such as making prospecting calls, following up with leads, or creating your media content. So let's say you choose reaching out to potential customers you're prospecting, and then you decide to use the Pomodoro technique to manage your time more effectively. So first, what you do is you set a timer for 25 minutes and start working. You focus exclusively on making prospecting calls. You avoid any, any sorry disruptions or any interruptions. So this will be your first Pomodoro. Once the timer goes off, you take a short break of around five minutes, but eventually those five minutes can be even reduced to two or three minutes. But if you're a beginner, take a five minute break, okay? And you can use this break to stretch, to grab a snack or do something important, it's important, unrelated to work. And then after the break, you set the timer again for another 25 minutes and you resume making your calls until again, the timer goes off. And this will be your second Pomodoro. Repeat the cycle of these 25 minutes and then take again a five minute break. And after you complete four Pomodoros, you take a longer break of around 30 minutes. Later, it can be 15 minutes. So by breaking your work into these focused intervals, you can maintain high productivity. And at the same time, you avoid being burned out. So regular breaks, they help you prevent mental fatigue. And also it provides an opportunity to recharge your batteries. So let's go to the next slide, please. And give me a second. <clears throat> okay, the next technique is time blocking. So basically it involves dividing your day into blocks of time. And each of those blocks are dedicated to a specific task or activity. It can help you stay focused and also it prevents you from multitasking. By the way, multitasking, contrary to popular belief, is not an effective way to get things done. Because when we divide our attention between multiple tasks, we not only reduce our ability to focus, but we also decrease the quality and efficiency of our work. So here's a tentative schedule um, for an MLCI professional, which is built on this time blocking technique. Eight to 10, training and personal development. Invest your time in your own personal development and continuous learning. So it's your most productive time. And that's the best time to absorb new knowledge, then, which then goes immediately to your core memory and stays there. It can involve reading books or articles related to MLM or MLCI. It can involve watching recorded training sessions or listening to podcasts. So in other words, you stay updated with the industry trends and also you enhance your skills to become a better, more effective network professional. From 10 to 10.15, you take a short break. From 10.15 to 12, it's product or service promotion. So you allocate time to promote the products or services that you offer. This can include creating content for social media platforms. It can include writing blogs, blog posts, 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 or conducting your product presentations. So focus on showcasing the value and benefits of your offering in order to attract potential customers. Then from 12 to 1 p.m. is your lunch break. Then from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., again, prospecting and lead generation. And this can include 
reaching out to potential customers or recruits, or you can follow up with leads from the previous day, or it can involve attending networking, networking events. And also you dedicate, dedicate this time to actively grow your network and then again, generate new leads that you can take up on later. From 3 p.m. to 3.15, again, this is, a, this is the time for your short break. And then from 3.15 p.m. to 5 p.m., you dedicate this time to time management and team, sorry, management and uh, support. And for example, if you have a team of network marketers that are under your leadership, you should dedicate time to support and manage them because they are looking up to you. And this can involve providing guidance, conducting team meetings or training sessions. And after today's session, you'll have quite a lot of material to do your own trainings. And that's, by the way, what we are urging you to do, spread the knowledge, ensure duplication. So your efforts will be multiplied several times over and the overall result will be incredibly, incredibly huge. So again, during those meetings, you can also address um, concerns and questions that your team members might have. And supporting your team uh, is, I already mentioned it, very, very important for your success and also for the success of your team too. Then 5 p.m. to 5.15, again, is your short break. And finally, 5.15 p.m. to say 6 p.m. or a little bit later if you want to, you can take care of your administrative tasks. This is where you track your sales, you manage your finances, and uh, because numbers like order, and you organize your business-related documents, etc., etc., etc. Because again, um, maintaining your business organized will ensure that all of your work is smooth, and you won't have to lose time on digging up for things of looking for things that you know for sure you have them but you don't know where they are i'm not talking about physical objects the same happens with our computer even with our emails or messages if you do not do not sort them out beforehand let's go to the next slide please and here i would like to give you a short overview short list uh, of apps that you can use in your time management. I would invite you to take a screenshot of this slide because I'm not really going to read and explain all of them. I will though try to explain the um, second one, but but I would suggest you still try try them out, all of them, and then you can find the app that suits your needs and interests and preferences the best. So I would like to talk about Trello. And by the way, Trello is a free app. And Trello is a visual project management app. It uses boards, lists, and cards to help you organize and track your tasks. So you can create different boards for different projects. You can add tasks in the form of cards. You can assign due dates and collaborate with team members, which I did personally when I managed big written translation projects in our company, CoinSet. And by the way, I also use Trello for making a list of movies I want to watch and a list of books that I want to read. And I also use Trello for my cooking recipes. I keep my cooking recipes in Trello too. And I also use it as a shopping list because several people can access the same Trello at the same time or the same board at the same time. So for example, when I go out, my wife can put additional items in the shopping list and I can see what I need to buy. So, and once you buy it, you press on the item and you literally move it to the purchased list and you drop it there. 
and then you see that well i've done it because you know i think we're way past the times when uh, people go around with shopping carts and you know consult with a piece of paper checking off the items uh, they bought or have to buy i mean we are in the 21st century after all again uh, trello can be used for your to-do lists and remember you have to also create your own to-do list. So probably it's a good idea if you install Trello and do your to-do list in that particular app. And I can give you a small tip how to do it. So basically you can create in Trello three different lists. No, scratch that. First, you create a board. Um, it's like a drawing board to use a metaphor. And you call that board my to-do list well at least that's what i do you can call it whatever you want whatever floats your boat so basically and in that board you create three lists or the number of lists can be bigger but three is a good start so the first list would be to do things that you have to do tasks that you have to do and that's where you add all your non-accomplished tasks and then again if you use the eisenhower matrix you can sort the tasks by relevance or even sorry sorry urgency and importance and then the next list would be your in progress list and that's where you put the tasks you are working on right now and again you can simply drag and drop the item or the card into this new list the interface is very very user friendly and finally you have a list that you can call done or accomplished or mission accomplished. And that's where you move all your completed tasks to. And when you do that, you get this feeling of accomplishment. I mean, when you keep the done list, the list of accomplished tasks, you have this feeling of um, satisfaction that you accomplished a task. And I remember somewhere on YouTube, I saw a great motivational speech by some US um, Navy admiral. I don't remember his name. And what, you know what he said? He said, like he asked the audience, do you know why soldiers in general start their day by impeccably making their bed? In some uh, armies, they use an actual ruler <laughs> to measure the blanket and the uh, the pillow, the distance of, of the pillow from the edge of the bed. It's because it's your first very, very simple task of the day. And once you accomplish that simple task, it sets you up for the rest of the day. It means that you started your day with successfully accomplished tasks. Again, we're talking about the satisfaction of a job well done. Well, of course, if you make your bed well. And also you can come up with your own reward system. For example, you treat yourself after you accomplish, let's say, 10 tasks. And by the way, I realized right now that I'm actually selling you this application without getting paid because I like it. I love it. And um, what I suggest you do is you find a product on our platform, CoinSet, you find this product that you love and you start promoting it. And promoting would come very easy to you because it is human nature to recommend things that we enjoy ourselves, like a good movie or a good restaurant. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to talk about cultivating productive habits, and reducing time wasters. <laughs> I hope my voice still st stays strong because I feel that I'm running out of juice. So time is an increasingly value valuable asset. And there are so many distractions out there that it's very easy to fall victim to time wasters that eat, literally eat away at our productivity and disrupt our focus. And as a result, we are left feeling overwhelmed. 
and to effectively counteract time wasters, it is first crucial to recognize those time wasters. And common time wasters include excessive social media use, constant email checking or message checking, unproductive meeting, multitasking, procrastination, and excessive online browsing. So now let's look at one of them, at each of them, sorry, one by one. So excessive social media use. It's a modern day curse. Social media platforms, they are designed to be addictive and they quickly become like a black hole that absorbs all of our time. Endless scrolling, checking notifications, and then waging, God forbid, holy wars against those who dare to disagree with you can literally eat away at very valuable hours that could, could be better spent on meaningful tasks, productive things. And one strategy to overcome this time waster would be for you to set time limits. For that, you can use a mobile app and there you can set the time limit for social media usage. And there are lots of apps uh, for both Android and iOS, iOS, and they're free too. For instance, you can limit your daily usage of Facebook to 30 minutes easily. And another strategy would be to have designated breaks for social media. For example, you allow yourself to check social media only during specific breaks or intervals and not anyway, not anyone else. For instance, you can check social media for a total of 10 minutes during your five minute break every hour. Remember the Pomodoro technique. Another time waster is constant email checking and the urge to constantly check and then respond to emails or messages, unimportant messages too, can be a very significant time waster. It interrupts our workflow, and then it diverts our attention away from more important and more productive activities. And one strategy of um, overcoming this time waster would be to use scheduled check-ins. So what you do is you, again, set designated times during your workday to check and respond to emails. For example, you can decide that you will check your email at 9 a.m., at 1 p.m. and let's say at 4 p.m. That's it. And then you should avoid checking email outside of these hours. Another strategy would be to simply turn off notifications. Disable email notifications on your phone and on your computer during your workday. And this will prevent constant interruptions. And also it will allow you to focus on your tasks without this temptation to check your emails uh, right away after you hear this beep beep sound. So the third time waster is unproductive meetings. Meetings that lack clear agenda, go off topic or involve people that shouldn't be there can also drain on our time and can lead to frustration and decrease our productivity. So the first recommended strategy here would be to always use an agenda and goals whenever you set up a meeting. So when you schedule a meeting, always in clear, include an agenda with specific objectives. For instance, if it's a marketing meeting, you say marketing meeting, agenda, discuss campaign strategy for let's say second quarter or third quarter, doesn't matter. So the second uh, recommended strategy here would be Attendance selection, I will explain. You need to be selective about who is invited to the meeting. And you should include only those individuals whose presence is essential, necessary for achieving this particular meeting's goals. For instance, you should exclude members, team members, whose roles are not directly related to the topic. Let me give you like a stupid, simple example. If it's a um, marketing meeting, then there shouldn't be people that deal with logistics, unless it's a like general company meeting, of course. So let's go to the next slide. We have three more to go. Yes, the fourth common time waster is uh, multitasking. And we already mentioned before that multitasking is not 
and effective way to get your things done. Because again, dividing our attention between multiple tasks is like putting too little butter over a too big slice of bread. So you don't get the taste of butter at all. And as you can notice, uh, it, it, I, I already ran out of my juices. So you might have noticed that today we've already covered the two suggested strategies for overcoming this particular time waster. First, it's prioritizing our tasks. Remember the Eisenhower matrix? And second, it's time blocking. So this is quite self-explanatory. Now, the next big time waster is procrastination. And procrastination is a literal time thief. It plagues a lot of people. So putting off important tasks in favor of less important or let's say more enjoyable activities can lead to unnecessary stress. And then you have this rush to complete tasks at a very last minute, which again, adversely impacts the quality of your work. And one strategy to deal with procrastination would be to use the two minute rule. For example, if you have a quick task that can be completed in two minutes or less, you set a rule to do it immediately. For example, reply to a short important email or work-related message as soon as you receive it. Another strategy involves breaking those tasks down into smaller pieces. For example, if you are procrastinating on a large project, break it down into smaller, manageable sub-projects. For instance, instead of thinking like, I need to write a big report, you say, let me start with outlining the structure of my report. It will be your first step. And finally, excessive online browsing. So the huge amount of information on the internet is both a blessing, it's a literally global library that you can get access to at any point of time. It's, I mean, that's the biggest, I think, achievement of humanity, the internet. And then at the same time, it's a curse because people mindlessly browse the internet, reading articles, watching videos, unrelated to their work completely. And it easily consumes big chunks of our time. And first, what you can do to um, overcome is to use the so-called blockers, website blockers. If you lack self-discipline to do it yourself, of course. So you install an extension in your browser to block websites that distract you during your work. And it will prevent you from mindlessly browsing the internet. Another way of overcoming uh, this particular time waster would be to use a reward system. Like we mentioned before, you set a reward for yourself after you complete a specific amount of work. For example, after one hour of uh, focused work, you allow yourself a 10 minute break to browse the internet or read the articles, watch a funny TikTok or a short reel uh, on YouTube made by Sharon, for example. And then you continue working. But again, guys, you shouldn't get me wrong here. This list is far from being a complete list of time wasters and ways to overcome them. But I think this is already something that you can start with if you've never done it before. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay. I think we have come to the last slide of my part of the training. And here I would like to leave some key takeaways and also give you your next action steps to take. So I would like... I would like to invite you to take a screenshot of this slide because I'm not going to read it out. And then if you take a screenshot, you will have like a short summary of our entire time management session. And then at your own leisure, I encourage you to reflect on your own time management practices and consider how you can apply what you've learned or 
heard today in order to boost your productivity? Probably some of the techniques you knew already, but I hope there was something new for you too. And also remember that time management is not about being busier, but it's about being more efficient and making more space for what truly matters. And also, please keep in mind that mastering time management is an ongoing process and it requires commitment and it requires practice. And the small changes that you make in how you manage your time can eventually lead to significant improvements in your personal and professional life, or I should put it in your professional and personal life. Okay, thank you for your attention, guys. And I guess now I would like to pass the floor to our next speaker, the one and only Mila Sirdikova. Mila, you have the floor. Hello, hello, Dennis. Thanks a lot for your part. I love it a lot. It's so amazing to see you as a speaker. I cannot have enough, you know, like watching you. <laughs> I'm amazed as part. well. <laughs> It's amazing. And believe it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Welcome. Dennis. Um, guys, put um, classes who enjoy this session about um, time management, effective techniques. And uh, what is your biggest takeaway from Dennis' part? Um, me personally, I love the Pomodoro part. <laughs> I definitely go, I'm going to try and use it myself and see how this works because um, being involved in so many different areas, I do feel like uh, my um, efficiency needs to improve a lot. So I'll definitely uh, try to uh, to practice and to really make it make the skills better. And that explains why Dennis is always, you know, like um, he's always prepared. He always, uh, you know, there. Everything is, you know, according to uh, timetable, according to the tasks, because he had so many tips, you know, he knows so many secrets <laughs> how to become efficient. So it's definitely a good example. So thanks a lot, uh, dear Dennis. Well, um, let's go to the next slide. And uh, today we have a big, big day, guys. It's our last day, day number five. And before going to my uh, content, I would like to congratulate all of you who are here. We have um, three rooms left out of five because this uh, three languages, English, Russian, and Spanish, um, rooms full of people and um, I really um, enjoying to to be here with you and today today the last day it's all about um, efficiency uh, being resilient to work with the mindset and to um, do whatever it takes to reach your desired dreams you see how we come back to dreams and uh, that's why all these uh, days which we've been through together they very important, but at the end of the day, um, no matter what challenges you face in your life, if you have the strong uh, why, you will always find the way. And let's talk a little bit about uh, achieving the work-life harmony. I know it sounds a bit like a fantasy uh, because in, in our life, we are not working in, like we're not living in perfect life with a, um, you know, ideal uh, way of um, doing certain things. Um, sometimes life could be very hectic um, and probably for the last few years uh, with all these economical uh, crises and everything would happen in the world, um, everybody has faced that's you know, the world has been shaken with everything what is happening. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. Um, and to achieve um, work-life harmony, it's become really a hard task. So here, um, one of my favorite uh, quote is, success is not about making money. It's about making a difference. And as soon as we start looking at their um like our working life, entrepreneurship life, as a not just the way um, how to make money, but how to really make a difference. Remember yesterday we discussed about add value. So if you switch perspective between uh, chasing money to um, adding value and making difference, we will see completely a different result. Uh, Sharon put in chat, uh, mission before commission. And this is true. If we we know that so many stories of successful startups, uh, Alibaba, Apple, uh, PayPal, there are tons of them. When it started in a garage, 
And people wanted to create this business, not because they wanted to become super rich. Um, success, you know, comes with the financial rewards too. And there are enough um, money in the world. The money are everywhere. We attract as much money as we actually need. So it's always about, you know, adding value. And therefore, having this work-life harmony, it's more like an internal, um, internal state when you feel like you are not um, running out of your energy. Please put who can relate. Because sometimes we work too much. And specifically why I wanted to uh, stay on um, work topic, because like MLCI is entrepreneurship. And being entrepreneur, it means that you put lots of effort. You know, we wanted to protect our business. We wanted to reach as many people as possible. We wanted to be efficient. We want this business to mean something for us, for our friends, for family. We want also um, have enough to help people who are in our closest circle. Uh, when I was doing one of the exercises about um, achieving my goals and dreams, I shared this before many times, but I would just repeat for those who are new. I thought that my biggest um, goal was to earn, you know, the first million. And I was like, this is what I want to do. I wanted to earn my first million before I'm 35. This was, you know, my, my goal, I thought, is my main goal. I was so mistaken. When I went through this um, exercise, uh, which Dennis has shared with you on a day number one, where you put your goal through the pyramid of goals, when you evaluate each of your goal, when you give a weight to each of your goal, and you put uh, in certain order, you put the goals which has more value on the top of the pyramid. So when I did this exercise, and actually, I realized that my biggest goal actually was to buy a car for my mom. And it was, you know, it was so like all of a sudden for me because I had so many different uh, goals. But this one was actually the one which I was like desperate to have. And the first commissions when I earned, you know, enough of them, I went back to home and uh, I managed to buy the car for my mom. And for me, it was, you know, the biggest success. I didn't went for, you know, like holidays. I didn't buy anything else, but I wanted to give. So that's why uh, whatever that's uh, your entrepreneurship goals you have, it's great to have them. But at the same time, it needs to be somehow balanced because if you only work, 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 work 24 seven, like sooner or later, you will feel like there's something is missing as, as if the life goes by and you don't have a time for friends, for family, for health, for sport, for rest, for travel. Look at this um, balance wheel. Like we have so many aspects in our life, but sometimes being an entrepreneur, we're so focused on, um, on job, on entrepreneur, on business, on income, that we completely neglect uh, the, rest of the, uh, the rest of the wheel. And there's so many um, like stories where rich people are not happy because they have a bad health or maybe because they don't have any friends they can really trust enough and they feel like the people around them only for money, like the money does not bring the happiness. The money is purely an instrument which should fulfill your goal. That's it. It's like it's instrument. It's, it's, not, it's not even an aim. It's not even the goal because we don't want to have money itself. We want to have either experiences which are hiding behind the money. So for example, you want to go on holidays. So you need money for holidays because your aim is holidays. Or maybe you want to um, have a car. Again, your aim would be to have money which then you can spend on car. So therefore the money itself, like in notes, they mean nothing unless you use them. But sometimes we're too much into the work and too much into, you know, like having all these, you know, notes and commissions that we completely neglect the rest of the important areas of our life. So this exercise, uh, the um, wheel of balance, um, I'm sure there are many of you have been through, but for those who never has completed this exercise, um, I advise you to just uh, do it in your spare time. Um, in front of you in the screen, you see this little wheel. 
And this will divide it into different sectors. So we have friends, health, sport, rest, travel, job, and income. And each of the sector has a rating from zero to 10. Um, the exercise is following. Try to ask yourself where, for example, you see your health is from zero to 10. You have health, maybe um, good health, and you are going to gym and you're happy um, with your body. Maybe you can put number nine or maybe even number 10, or you don't have time to go to gym. Your back is always hurting. You feel you're not miserable with your body. And then you put um, two or three or maybe even one. Same with, the, same with the sport. When the last time you did some sport or walking or at least something, is it number 10 or is it number four, five, or even maybe less? So try to do this exercise and in each area of your life, put the numbers. And then you would be able to see when you cross them all together, you would be able to see, is your wheel look like a wheel? or you will look like uh, something else. Maybe it's a triangle, maybe it's something with lots of corners, maybe there are some areas which definitely needs to be improved, but this will help you to first, to have a clarity on what is really matters for you and what requires immediate attention. All areas which will be lower than five, they need to have your immediate attention. This means that you neglect this sector because you probably sacrifice your time with them, whatever it's friends or family or health, and um, you spend more time on, on other sectors. But the balance means it needs to be balanced. All the areas need to be balanced. Uh, reason number two, what benefit this exercise can give you is to focus. It will help you to focus on activities that contribute on a long-term success and well-being. So when you know what area needs to be improved, you will know yourself what actions you need to do, what activities you need to do in order to uh, increase this area. And number three, which already Dennis mentioned about uh, the time management at the beginning of the session, the time management will um, simply encourage you to have a better, um, like efficient, efficient way of um, building um, what are it's what is important for you. So you would be able to really tell the difference what is important, what is not, what is urgent, what is not urgent. So doing this. Um, uh, wheel of balance will really help you to understand what areas needs to be improved. Let's go to the next slide. Here are little steps uh, which can be undertaken in order for uh, trying to achieve the work-life harmony. First, set the boundaries. You need to define the work hours and stick to them and ensure your network knows when you're available and when not. What I noticed myself uh, when I um, like started the business, I didn't have any boundaries. And even, uh, even today, my boundaries are still like not even, we, we cannot call them bonders. And this is exactly same happening um, with the corporate uh, work and with the MLCI work. And it's, it's not good because people, and we can reach each other during the night. We have a very late calls. We have very early calls. We always feel like uh, there is a need to sacrifice, you know, weekend because we do something important. Who can relate to this? Who sacrifice lots of family time for work time? then just to realize that it could have been done differently. I've done it so many times myself. And I feel like, why would I say, you know, like, yes, when I know that I'm taking time off from my family or I'm taking off the time what is important to me. And when the time goes by, when you look at all these missed opportunities with your family and friends, you actually, you actually realize that, well, I should not have done it. So set the clear boundaries uh, when you start the building uh, your business from the day one, if you have your network, or if you're already existing leader, or if you work on a, on a corporate, make sure that there's a certain time when you're available and people know this time and they respect the time. And if they reach and for whatever reason outside of your schedule, it has to be super urgent or better do it in the morning. In Telegram, actually there is one um, cool option available that you can put um, uh, delay messages. 
which I find out very recently. And it's so cool. Sometimes uh, an evening time, I want to uh, reach uh, somebody, but then I know it's too late. So I put the message uh, first thing in the morning. So then I'm not forgetting about this task because I already put it on the message. And the person will wake up and he will see the message in the morning, which means I don't disturb his personal time during the evening or night. That's why setting uh, boundaries is very important because the business can take all your time. There are always going to be some something to do. There are always going to be some meetings to do, some negotiations, some discussions. It always will be busy because as soon as, soon as you are um, becoming a businessman and you run your own business, it never will be, you know... Um, the task they will never finish the task will be different so when you start your business you have one task when you are on the leadership level you have completely different tasks but they will be there always and with our system that we don't have no limits for earnings it's actually also one of the biggest motivation but it's also one of the biggest step, step backs for um wheel of balance because it's you know it's so hard to stop and say you know what okay it's enough um i have this month's already income i don't need anymore now i can go and spend the time for my family usually people as soon as they get taste of this um business they want to continue and they want to do as much as they can and it's okay to do this as soon as you know uh where you should take a break and you know what are your priorities in life in general uh, number two prioritize the task uh, dennis already mentioned about this so i will not spend much time on this number three time for self-care the incorporate regular physical activity adequate sleep and relaxing techniques for your routine I've been using this a lot. Every day I'm doing some morning exercises because if I don't do the exercises, I will feel like uh, my day starts in the wrong way. I love to do uh, different um, meditations, affirmations before I start my day um, or an evening time before I go to, to bed because it's helped me to, uh, if, it, if it's in the morning, it's helped me to set the mood for the day. If it's in the evening, it's helped me to, you know, uh, clean, clean the day and shut the day, uh, like summarize what has been done and then the next day to start fresh. And self-care is important because sometimes even, you know, like um, this 15, 20 minutes of breaks, uh, I put like a meditation and I listen can really, really help a lot. And there are lots of uh, scientific proof that's um, taking this little break during the day with Dennis also I shared with you are very important because uh, our efficiency, you know, a Pareto rule, uh, 20 to 80, like it's always there. So you can be busy all day, but at the end of the day, you can only achieve 20% of the task. Uh, so therefore, um, always take the time for your self-care. Number two, uh, quality family time. Already mentioned, it's important to recognize the families, recognize um, who you have outside the work. Because at the end of the day, uh, the work is only one part of our lives. But when we're going to come to the end of our, our our life, hopefully long and happy life, the family members, they will be there next to us. And our life probably will be just there as a good reminder of what, what we have done. But, you know, the family, this, like our kids, like they will stay after. And this is our memory. And this is they are the one who will you know keep us alive as soon as they remember about uh, about us and we've been talking about um leaving a legacy for this specific reason but to leave a legacy for who if you don't have enough time to spend with your family uh if you don't have a family and you have only work then what legacy we're we talking about so find the time for you and find the time for your family so you can really have a quality um, quality uh, time together. Number five, embrace the flexibility. MLCI offers flexibility and is great. Uh, it's the biggest advantage because you can have uh, your schedule, which you can create for yourself. But again, from one hand, it's a greatest advantage, but it can easily turn to be disadvantage if you are working 24 seven and if your timetable is so busy and so packed that you don't have the time to think, to rest, to sleep, to properly eat. So embrace the flexibility means um, make sure that you do um, put your day forward the way which is the most productive for you, but don't overdo it.
don't overdo it. And the and last number six, it's regular regular check-ins. Um, I do do check-ins every month or so and see how how my months man, went, what did I achieve, what I did not achieve. It's actually good to do the regular checks in um, by the end of each day. And um, as a, like when I start building the business MLCI, I had this um, notebook where I would put every single meeting, every single note. And it's really helped me a lot to be more productive and to understand my conversion, to understand um, how to progress uh, within the MLCI. Uh, but then uh, when I reach uh, the, the higher stages of the company and had a different task, I neglected this, even though it was very, very useful to have um, daily uh, check-ins. But now um, I do have the big uh, like kind of monthly reviews uh, with myself. Um, and of course, end of the year review, when uh, the new year comes, this is the time to look back at your entire year uh, and think, okay, what the 2023 was for me. Are you doing the same? Uh, please put plus if you know, like you find it the time for the new year to kind of look back and see what year was like and what new year will be. It's the best time to, um, to plan, but not only once a year. The planning needed to have, you know, always. Uh, I change my plan, update them on a monthly basis. But uh, the, the big ones, uh, I set there for the year. So I love this uh, this exercise when I put their pen and paper and start putting, thinking, you know, what I have reached and what it will be. And it's a good time for to be in, uh, with myself. So these are little eight uh, eight steps, six steps, sorry, which can help you to create a uh, little bit of work-life uh, harmony. Let's go to the next slide. Now let's talk about um, developing growth mindset. Uh, Albert Einstein says, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. And it is true, and I can sh I'm sure many of you can relate and put plus in chat, that many difficult um, things in life, uh, situations, provided um, lots of opportunity to grow. I will give you um, one example. When I, um, I remember myself, I was 19 years old, uh, studying in Estonia University. Um, and I felt like there's something, something not right in my life. That's, um, there are lots of um, conflicts between the different nations and languages. And I felt like um, I was not belonging there. And myself and my dear friend, Anya, we decided to do the crazy step uh, in our lives. And we've been still too young, like 19 years, we just finished um, school. And this was our second year of university. We decided to um, to find uh, the country when where we can go and earn money. And it happened to be uh, UK. And within the three days, within the three days, I come to university on Friday, uh, because we had exam on Monday. Um, and within these three days, which was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I turned my life completely. Because when I passed the exam, on the end of the Monday, we had a flight to the UK. We did not have the, any languages. We did not know where we put in ourselves. We did not even have the proper place to live over there. We find some, you know, like job as a housekeeper, which does not require to speak any languages. So you can just slightly clean the room. It was um, like some house they said they will um, give us to live. And when we came to UK, it actually was empty house with not even bed and we slept on the floor. And it was like, and we could not even speak because we did not speak English and nobody could understand us. So these three days, make a, such a big difference in my life. And it was the hardest time when you come into the new country with a new language, with a completely new people, with a new job, which you don't even, like it's not even the job of my dream. And But this, this hardest time gave me the biggest um, growing circle, a growing wave in my life. So therefore, if you feel like it's difficult, you know, there is something there prepared for you because only through the difficulties, this is where at the end of that difficulty, you will see the reward. You will see that there is something prepared for you. Take it like as a little life test. The life is testing 
do you have enough guts to really fulfill what you want? Or you will be the one who will change your mind. Or you will be the one who will give up. Or you will be the one who will not fulfill your dreams because you feel like it's not worth it anymore. There is always a test by life. By, like life is preparing the test. And only when you pass this test, you will be able to recognize what is the reward waiting for you. So in the content of um, MLCI, having the growth mindset, it means embracing challenges, perceiving through the failures and being open to learn and to grow your network marketing journey. Every day, potentially full of good moments and not a good moment. When you start to do presentations, you will see how many people will tell you yes and how many people will tell you no. And I can tell you straight away now, you will have more no than yes. And I created this game for myself when I realized what is my conversion, that I need to pick, I need to collect five no's because number six, it will be a yes. So I had a conversion around 50 to 60 um, the, on, on the, when I just started. The higher you have a growth of skill, then your conversion is higher. And every time when I had a no, for me, it was not something being disappointed. I would have told myself, well, perfect. One more step closer to the yes. But in order for you to do this, you need to have a certain mindset. You need to have a growth mindset that you actually understand that every single no will take you closer to the yes. And how to do this? First, change your self-talk. We do talk to ourselves a lot. We always have this inner dialogue. We've been constantly talking to ourselves and sometimes we don't even realize how much we put negativity inside of ourselves. So replace the negative or fixed mindset statement with the positive and growth orientated ones. Because it's important for, for you to really believe in yourself. This is where it's all start. Nobody else can believe in yourself as much as you can because nobody else know you that much like like that much like yourself. <laughs> and if you don't believe in yourself, we have this inner dialogue that you're not good enough, that you're not um, pretty enough, that you don't have enough, then this is something you will be like putting like a poison in your mind. So stop doing this and change your self dialogue into something which will be bringing uh, positivity, something which will feed your mind uh, with a positivity and allow you to grow. Number two, the value process over the end result. So we hear not just for, I guess, filling the goals and that's it. Now I complete everything what I want to, to have in life. My job here is done. It never worked like this. When you achieve the goal, it's always going to be a next level goal and next level goal and next level goal. And at the end of the day, it is not about even the goal achievement itself. It's about the journey you go through. It's about the daily, uh, like embracing yourself, going through these activities that can drive the results. And it's all about journey. It's about the process itself rather than end result. How many times you actually achieve the goal that you might wanted to have, and then you've been happy for a very short period of time. And then it was like, this is strange. I want this so bad, and I had it, and well, that's it. It's like a few minutes. It happened to me. Uh, I wanted to buy an a, like, expensive bag. And I thought, you know what, I will I buy this bag and it's going to be there for me and I will be so happy. Um, and I was maybe for a day or two. <laughs> and then it just become just a bag, you know. <laughs> so that's why it's, it's so important to understand the journey, how you how you came to this dream, because this, what makes you who you are is the journey. You will tick the box of your wish list and it's going to be another wish list, another level of your uh, dream. But it's important to, um, to have this journey, which will really make you to feel proud of yourself. 
Number three, cultivate the sense of purpose. Find the focus on what motivates you and drives you and MLCI business or in general entrepreneurship. Uh, we talk about this on the day one and yesterday I also um, uh, mentioned about purpose, about finding your why, because this is something which will keep you always um like motivated internal motivation remember we discussed this yesterday internal motivation will will keep you uh growing and will keep you going no matter what number four learn from the failures uh, you will see there are lots of things which might go not in a way like you expected and it's okay we cannot control everything in our life it's impossible um but there are certain things which we can take and learn from them. Each mistake can potentially be a lesson. And every person who you meet, who you feel like it's been a negative person or this person doesn't bring anything in life, they could be the biggest teachers. So that's why I always learn from failures, try to analyze them to see what went wrong and how can this be improved. And sometimes what we perceive as a failures they might not be the failures. They might be the biggest um, lessons which allow you to go to completely next level of your development. And last but not the least, encourage and surround yourself with the growth-minded individuals. You heard this many times that have a look at the people uh, who you were um, like been in a company with your closest five uh, friends or family members or the people who you um, spend time on a daily basis and you will have the pretty picture of who you are so like um, I don't know if I completely agree on this because um, like if I look at the five uh, people I have um, at the moment, um, like I have my mom here, I have a little baby. <laughs> so like two already, already there, like my family's members. Um, but it just, I'm just joking. Uh, but it's all about who people next to you and who you surround yourself with. Uh, growing a multi business, it's beautiful because you meet so many um, like entrepreneurs, people who wanted to achieve different things in their life, people who fed up going this right circle, who wanted to achieve something bigger and to be among these entrepreneurs, uh, mentors, or people who you helping with, it's, it's really great. It feels, you know, amazing. So therefore, always try to surround yourself with uh, like-minded people. Always trying to find somebody who you can learn from, somebody who could be your role model, but also be the role model for somebody else. Maybe it's your family member. Maybe it's your friend. Maybe it's the person who you will um, meet in the coffee shop after this session. You never know. But don't just always look up. There are many people who there in your circle who might add the massive value and be your best buddies for MLCI. And they're looking for you. They're looking for somebody who can share the same um, you know, mentality with them to be on the same page. Because it's so important to have this support. Support from families, from friends, support from the colleagues, support from the business partners. And the more people you have in your um in your circle, uh, the faster the faster you will grow. And this is the beauty of a MLCI business, that it allows us to meet each other. Have a look. We have people here from Australia, from India. We have people here from Netherlands. We have people from all over the place. Um, and we all here in one Zoom. It's, it's amazing how this technology works and we have ability to learn from each other, to pick up something important to share. And every single time when you put in chat, you know, there are lots of things which I learn from myself. I learn from you. And there's so many things which I hope that you also are learning from this training that we put together for you. But it's amazing to how you um perspective about the life in general can change if you surround yourself with the right people, if you surround with the like-minded and growth-minded individuals. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, building the resilience and maintaining the positive attitude. So we talk about the mindset uh, just in the previous slide. 
and the mindset is um, very um, vibrant topic. There is like uh, when I think about growth mindset, I imagine something like um, the strength within us, but it's not something like you cannot change. For me, it's something like um, um, like substance which is strong, but which also can can be changed. Because there are internal factors and external factors can influence our mind. And resilience, building the resilience and have a right attitude, I would say these are two main foundation and components in order for you to have this strength within yourself. You probably have heard this quote many times, but I would like to repeat for, for, for everybody. It is not wherever you get knocked down. It's wherever you can get up. And look at the small kids. How many times they fall down, but they still keep learning how to walk. I have not met a single adult who did not learn how to walk and was still crawling, crawling on the street. I did not find a single healthy person who would not learn how to walk. But when you look at the kids, it's such a difficult task for them. They put lots of effort. They fell down. They cry. They try to do it again. They persistent. They have a certain, you know, like attitude that I want to walk. I want to do exactly what my mom and dad is doing. And they're not crawling. They're walking. I want to walk too. They look at the parents like a role models and they take whatever it, they do whatever it takes for them to learn how to walk. And when you see the first walk, independent walk child has, they happy, like you can see their faces like, like a sunshine because they're so proud of themselves that they finally managed to learn it. And this is how we adults need to um, look at our achievements too, look at our life in general. The resilience, it is not what happening to you this is how you react and respond and recover from what has happened to you. Another uh, big quote, which I'm sure you all heard of, the life is not happening to you. It's happening for you. You, the one who create everything around you. And there are certain prerequisites in order for you to have this um, the resilient and positive attitude is for self and the awareness. Be aware about your strength and weaknesses your emotional triggers we're not uh we're not a doll that had no emotions and we just there you know like do whatever our boss is telling us we are human beings we have emotions we can be so positive in one moment and so negative in another moment we can be so happy and at the same time we can cry out there are so many things we have as a human being and we need to recognize this what is your strength what are you good at what are your weaknesses recognizing the weaknesses is one of the uh, biggest opportunities for human to evolve because knowing your weaknesses will allow you to um, turn your weakness into the strength but if you think that you are perfect and you don't allow emotions to go in the way and you're like a robot do only what you've been told to do then i'm sure you will not have enough of juice in your life so therefore recognize and, and be self-aware about what is happening with you what is happening outside what is happening with the universe in general will help you to um, have a resilient um, mindset has this internal strength within you. Uh, number two, openness to learn. Be open-minded. Be willing to learn from both success and failures. I think being open-minded is one of the um, biggest um, opportunities for us to grow because there's so many things in my life um, people been offering to me and Sometimes I feel like, well, maybe it's not for me, but let me let me have a look. Let me have a look and learn. Maybe there is something what I can use. And this happened a lot, even for the for the project. There are some projects which have been brought into the ecosystem and we had them, which at the beginning I felt like, no, this is like, I don't think this project will be successful. I think this project will be suitable. But at the end of the day, when with open, have an open mind, help to really look at this from the different angle and to understand how this project can really fit to our uh, portfolio or to our ecosystem. 
Number three, have a strong support network. I already mentioned about the having close, uh, have a circle of the friends and family who provide encouragement and support. This always will be um, foundation because we are human beings. We're so connected to each other. And it's important just on a, on a good time to have somebody to celebrate with and a bad time to have somebody who will be there and tell them, you know, everything's going to be okay. Trust me, we're going to go through this. It's important sometimes you have this little message, little support, maybe even not face to face, but even on chat, on telegram uh, to each other. It's okay. We're going to go through this. Sometimes it's all what it takes. Ensure number four, you taking care of your body and mind. Uh, this is across the entire topic of uh, working with a mindset, uh, working with your inner self. It's always will be body and mind needs to be taken care of because we come here on this planet earth and our soul you believe maybe you believe or maybe not has a so many lives we had lots of previous lives and we're gonna have lots of um continuously lives after we're not here but our body is given us for certain years only maybe for 80 years 100 years uh, but it's only going to be there at certain time and the time will go very fast so it's our uh, duty to love our body and to keep our mind uh, hungry, to keep our mind, you know, always growing and learning, because this is how we can create the beautiful things in our life. And this is how um, we are, as our soul will evolve through having this experience here and now. Let's go to the next slide. So building the resilience um, and second part is the positive attitude. So we talk with you a little bit about now uh, building the resilience and why it's important. And now we'll, I would like to spend uh, just one slide for a positive attitude. So the positive attitude in general, it's a mental disposition uh, that enables individuals to approach life changes with a positive outlook, expecting good results. It involves focusing on the positive aspects of the situation, looking for solution rather than dwelling on problems, and maintain hope and optimism even in the difficult times. There are lots of studies, um, you know, being done in the different topics with the different people about change which positive attitude can have. The positive attitude, we cannot touch it, we cannot see it but we can feel it and we know when we are positive and we know when we are uh, negative. There are lots of interesting books and I will share with you by the end of the session, some of the my favorite books and movies who help me to stay on a positive um, attitude, on a positive mindset. Uh, but it's the, the most important aspect of the positive attitude is, um, is understand and is to know, to know, that there is always a way, there is always a hope, and there's always mm, something which is there, universe prepared for us. We are human beings are unique. Everything what's around us, lakes, mountains, animals, everything is there to serve human. I know it might sound like a big, bold statement, but the planet Earth, if you look at their pyramids of the... Mm, I don't know how you call it in English, but if you look at the uh, pyramids of the planet Earth started from the trees and animal kingdom and going further, uh, not the food chain, uh, go further, the human will be there on the top. And there's a lots of uh, stories and uh, like the different um, in different religions in the, in the Bible uh, that Earth is being created for human. That everything is, was created for human being to, to be here, to enjoy the life, to be happy. Just think about it. Potentially, everything what's around you, house, chair, table, computer, everything what is outside, tree, air, lake, water, it's been created for you. For you and only you as a representative of human being. Everything what's around you been created for you. 
if you think this like on a deeper level, you actually will have such a magnificent appreciation to everything. And to, to, to learn this deep, the positive attitude and your and general positive mindset, you need to remind yourself that you've been brought on this planet Earth with everything. There is unlimited resources. It's just here for you. Your soul had the chosen, this body, this town, this family, this like partner, this business, everything has been there pre-calculated somehow and you created the life as you see today because of the choices you make because of the choices that you do on the on the every daily basis and if you want to keep have a positive vibrations and to increase your frequency then you go to switch to the positive attitude you need to learn how to um have all these um, instruments, resilience and attitude and growth mindset in order for you really be connected to yourself, be connected to the source. The positive attitude is the financial block of the resilience. When individuals maintain a positive outlook, they are more likely to view the challenges as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles. Challenges are opportunities. Remember this, always remember this, no matter how hard your life at the moment, no matter how much at the moment in your plate, the challenges are always opportunities. And the life is testing you to see how far you can go to really achieve your goal, your dream, how far you can go. And here I would like to um, read little legend about two wolves, two beautiful wolves you can see on the screen. Thanks a lot for designers to put it in really, really nice, magical, magical way. Um, Cherokee uh, once told his grandson about the battles, uh, about the battle that goes between, um, between each person. He said, my son, the battle is between two wolves inside us. One is negativity. It's anger, sadness, stress, contempt, disgust, embarrassment, fear, shame, and hate. And another wolf is called positivity. It's the joy, gratitude, uh, sincerity, hope, pride, inspiration, love. The grandson looked at his um, father and for a minute and he asked him, so which wolf is means? Which wolf will win? And the answer was simple. The one you feed. So we always have a choice. And the one wolf we feed will win. The answer, is, the question is for you. Which one are you feeding today? Are you feeding the wolf which called fear? Or are you feeding the wolf which called love? It's always come to the choice we have. And it's a bigger gift, our God or universe or whatever that you believe is, to give the human being on this planet Earth is to have a choice. Because sometimes we feel like we've been put in a certain position. There is a saying that we don't choose our, um, our families we've been born with. To learn now about their um, laws of the universe, I, just, I disagree with this. And a certain level, our soul had chosen the parents which we come to. But in our level of being living here and have a daily choice, this is what we can not not believe because it's our choices which makes us who we are. Let's go to the next slide. So there's three uh, very quick strategies to build the resilience and positive attitude which you can take the print screen and try to actually um, practice them and look at them on a daily basis to really um, work on your resilience and to have uh, the, the positive attitude in life in general. First, cultivate a positive outlook. Practice gratitude by writing it down three things you're thankful every day. I do this also, um, not unfortunately on a daily basis, uh, I need to uh, to do this more frequently, but to bring the gratitude is one of the biggest uh, forces. When you saying that you're thankful for something which is not yet um, which is not yet there, maybe you're thankful for 
for something which you might have or you already had. It's very powerful. You can be thankful for for the family, for the parents, thankful for the day. You can be thankful for food and you can be thankful for future opportunities which your life will bring it to you. But practice these three things, three things every day that you're thankful about, what they could be. What now in your chat? What is your um, gratitude could be for today? What is three things that you are thankful today? Lara put, I'm think, um, I am thankful for seeing, hearing, and feeling the life every day. Family, friends, finance, <laughs> team, God. <laughs> Bob is uh, thankful for breathing. Yes, it's, it's, it's amazing to be <laughs> thankful for that. It, you see, it's so many things which we can be truly uh, thankful about it. And to also um, visualize success. And uh, we talk about on a day one to create different um, dream boards or to, um, to write the asset to yourself. Do whatever it takes for you to visualize visualize what your life will be not in the future but how you want to live every single day started from today started from now like what that your life is number two develop the problem solving skills skills this will help you in general when you are facing the challenges and we learn now the challenges the equals of opportunities and if we know that every challenge will unlock the opportunity to us then we will um, start treating the challenge different so the uh, problem solving skills they're good because then we can move forward with a solution rather than complaining about uh, these challenges happen. It's so easy to complain. It's so easy just to uh, say how bad everything is instead of the saying, you know what, let me find a solution. And if solution can be found to the problem, then there is not a problem in the first place. And if you cannot find the uh, solution to the problem, then what the point of worry about this? This is one of the Dalai Lama quotes, I believe. <laughs> Number three, embrace the, uh, embrace the change. View change as opportunity to grow and learn. We talk about this a lot already. Um, nurture your relationship, build strong connection with your team, uh, animal network, animal CI. And I would take this level a bit higher level in general in, in life. Nurture your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your business colleagues and with people around you because we can feel each other why there are um, certain speakers or certain uh, people in your life who you wanted to be surround surround with you want to listen you want to come to the trainings like uh, when Tony Robbins came to to city I was there one of the first people who bought the ticket because I wanted to see Tony myself I want to feel his energy I want to do these exercises with him I want to be there uh, like on his training, uh, it was like fire walking training. I did this in London and it was amazing experiences. One of the greatest trainings I had ever in my life when we've been uh, walking through the fire and this was so cool. So it's helped to really connect with the people like this and to really go to the next level. Number five, uh, take care of the good health. Um, of course, exercising, sleep, eating well, everything to keep your body to have resources. Because if your body doesn't have resources, um, it's so hard and it's so difficult when your mind is creating different strategies, when your mind is so like active, but your body is so passive because you have a pain, because you have a headache, because there's something else. It's like, it doesn't work together. <laughs> your hungry mind, your amazing mind needs to work with a strong body. Only together you can achieve more. Only together you can be more fulfilled. So mind, body, spirit, these three, they need to be all in very good um, shape and keep the very good health. Maintain their work and life balance. Uh, we already talked about this. And practice mindfulness and relaxation techniques. Um, I love the meditation. I love yoga. And there are different exercises because they can really 
help to reduce the stress level. They can give energy. They can sharpen the mind. Um, we used to do like uh, with Valentin so many uh, rituals where we would meditate. We will work with the energy. We would use uh, different methods to make the rituals really strong and to call to our spirits to call to you know the universe and we work on so many different uh, levels and it's work it's work i remember um india um who been to event to india can you please put plus in chat put the plus in chat uh-huh i'll tell you one secret which i never shared <laughs> before <laughs> India, uh, this event, event event, like, oh my gosh, I think it was one of the biggest challenges in my life because everything was like wrong. Start from the beginning with this venue, this amazing venue, uh, to reach this venue and to have this agreement, this contract and everything. It's, I, I felt like uh, it took part of my soul to do this event, to do the event together with the, like, with the people who support. And I lived in India for almost three months uh, to, to create and to finish this event. And um, one of the days, it was a training in Goa. And we only had a few weeks left before the event. We know there are so many people buying tickets. There are so many people are coming to India. And all of a sudden, we realized that we didn't have the venue because it was uh, in Bo, it was the high period of time. Um, the lots of um, tourists was there. And for some reason, the venue, which we thought we were gonna book, um, all of a sudden, it just, it's, they said, no, they, they booked for somebody else because we didn't manage on time to either finish some documents or whatever it is. And we have two weeks, two weeks before, and we don't have a venue. And we have a people, like 70,000 people coming to India. I think it was even more, Ravi Kumar. Uh, the stadium was for 20,000. So uh, we feel almost entire stadium. And two weeks, and we don't have the venue for the training, for the Goa training. And all, like what we've been doing, apart from the searching like a crazy, every night we've been sitting together, with the people and we've been meditating we've been calling the universe we've been calling our spirits our you know through all our past lives and the future lives we've done like crazy things you know to making sure that we can attract we, we were doing some exercises where we close our eyes and we were um seeing the people the training how many arrived how everything goes so i almost was like living this moment before the moment is came and i knew exactly how it will be because we put this in our minds we've been doing meditation group meditation we've been saying this out loud like i can imagine and see people come into the room it's beautiful hall. we have enough space for everybody i can see the old tables i've been taking this beautiful set and the round tables people sitting there everything we've been going through like this and guess what and one day i think within the next three or four days all of a sudden we received the call from the venue managing um, the director of the venue. And he told us, you know, guys, this has never happened before. You're really lucky because the wedding, which is supposed to be on that day, just get canceled. And we were like, we were so happy. <laughs> we could not even like believe what are the chances that in India, wedding, wedding will be canceled. It's close to zero because the wedding is such a big thing in all countries. But in India, the weddings are huge. It could be easily like 1,000 people in a wedding. And when the callers and they said exactly venue which you need, exactly this venue is canceled because it's supposed to be reserved. And for the venue, which for the wedding, which they already even partially paid off, we were so happy. And we've done this amazing um, training in Goa. And I, I feel like it was something really like a miracle because I don't know what we would have been done if people came from the countries and we could not have a proper venue to feed everybody. This will be like completely ruined experience. But when you practice these different techniques, when you do the meditation, when you 
really believe in yourself. You work with the universe. You work with the like-minded people. And it's all together. You can do miracles. And I've seen it so many times. I just give you one example. But there are so many other examples. How things that just happen out of blue. How the right people are coming. How the right opportunities come. And how things which you think they are not going to work out. All of a sudden, they are working so well. So that's why I'll, it's it's beautiful. So practice techniques, practice the meditations. Uh, do this either by yourself or with a group of people if you have these like-minded people and you will see how powerful this could work. On the next training, we're going to have some more detailed training um, for those who wanted to go to the next level and we're definitely going to do some uh group meditation together because i think it's one of those moments when we can really together make a big difference we can we can make a shift on on a different level um by doing together meditation and by picturing how our life and business will be it's extremely powerful so keep this, uh, we will have this for, for next for next training, not for this one, but otherwise make sure that you do this in your own time at the time which is most convenient for you, but definitely keep doing it. Don't neglect this point. Let's go to the next slide. So very quickly to summarize, in order for maintained resilience and positivity, stay focused on your why, set realistic goals, make sure that you don't fear failure, stay connected with the people and seek help if needed. If you feel like there is something missing uh, or you feel like um, you, you're ready to go to the next level, but there are some obstacles, uh, reach out for help, reach out for help for the leaders or for person next to you. Uh, you all have also um, my number in the group. Is there anything related and they can help with? I will be more than happy to do this. But in general, make sure that you, know, you use all the resources available. They are there for you to serve and to help you to grow because in MLCI, we are here as one big family because our goal is to have 15% um, of the entire world population to be involved in our businesses somehow from the client point of view, from the business point of view, from their ownership point of view. But we need people and we create this business for people. We want to help them. The amazing projects which will be launched very soon, they also will be overwhelming. There will be good projects related to the health, related to the um to us to, to grow, to learn, and to become a better human being. And let's go to the next slide. Very quickly to a few tools and resources, um, favorite movies and books, which I recommend for everybody to see. The Pursuit of Happiness is the story about um, guy who went to the hell with his little kid, but he reached his, uh, his own goal. I will not be a spoiler for those who never watched this movie, but it's very amazing and motivational movie. It's really um, show you how we can um, change our life with only one thing, with a desire, with having a desire to have a better life. And it's enough, it's enough. It's an amazing movie to watch. Braveheart, uh, classic. Uh, put classes here, actually. I love these movies. Um, it's one of my favorite movies all the time. And it's about, uh, you know, be brave. Um, follow, your, follow your heart. Follow your mission. And uh, don't give up. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. But always um, trust in yourself. Always trust in yourself. And Coach Carter, uh, this is also a very motivational movie about not giving up, have us achieve the certain targets, and no matter what's happening in the outside world, no matter how hard the game could be, there's always um, a room for, for improvement. And if you have a right team with the right spirit, you can win. You can always win, no matter what. And this movie will teach you this, will show you. It's based on a, a real uh, life story, so it's very powerful. And a few books, The Power of Now, Edgar Tolley, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, Life List, 1000 Desires, Dreams, and Things Worth Trying, uh, Master Your Time, Master Your Life, Brian Tracy, and Joe Dispenza, uh, You Are Placebo, Making Your Mind Matter. Um, I love the Joe Dispenza uh, teachings a lot. I came across him, I think, first time a few years ago. 
Uh, he even did some of the um, uh, webinars in London. It was online webinar um, I attended. And you know, now the few books which um, reading the very powerful Valentin Big into uh, Joy Dispenza uh, teachings. And there are different techniques uh, which we actually use in order to um, cultivate our ideas and to really make sure that um, we know and we do the exercises which will help us to grow in general. So these are books and movies which um, I recommend and I think they're very powerful. Uh, they will help you to learn something new, to have a good time and um, to take some takeaways because the, what we put in our mind, um, it's very important because somebody else's expertise, experience can also teach us a lot. So rather than going through all experiences ourselves, we can read the book or watch the movie and take the nuggets of wisdom. So then we don't need to do these mistakes ourselves. Let's go to the next slide. Homework day number five, our um, last day of the training. So take one time management technique and apply it to your task, uh, what Dennis has shared with you. Identify the time waster and develop the strategy to overcome it. So what is or who is the time waster in your uh, in your life? Um, it's yeah, amazing how sometimes we, we don't even recognize that certain activity taking lots of lots of our times. Reflect on your current work-life balance. Have a look what areas uh, requires attention. Read articles or watch the video, uh, same like yesterday. I advise you to um, get inspired. Tomorrow is Saturday, then is Sunday coming. So make sure that you find the time uh, for the family, find the time for rest, for meditation, for being with yourself a little bit, and also watch some cool movie, video, uh, read a book or article, something which will really um, help you to move forward with a positive attitude, with resilience, and to help you to bring closer to your why. And think of the recent challenge you face. I, I practice the reframing situation. Uh, this actually, this exercise, why I wanted to give, um, sometimes we, Mm, don't um, value the experience we had in the past. But if you look at um, on all of us, that there is not a single person who never had a challenges. There are always different challenges. Some of the challenges can be simple, some of the challenges could be harder, but we all went through them. And if you will have a look at the recent challenge you face, and you will analyze how you handle this challenge. This will actually help you to learn a lot of things about yourself, but also you would be able to understand um, next time when the challenge will have will come, and it's definitely going to be next time, it's inevitable, how you will react and what would you do in order to faster turn this challenge into the opportunity. So it's very nice exercise. I learned it in one of the... Uh, courses I attend uh, where the task was to list the challenges and exactly like put here um, like explain and how you overcome this challenge and also um, I would give an extra task about the gratitude um, do your daily gratitude practice and you will see how the world around you will start having different vibrations how you will have different energy inside you just because you will be grateful for something or somebody or some situation or even grateful to yourself for you being you. Let's go to the next slide. And now we have the final, final slide for today, which is day number five. We unlocking our, the last uh, skill, last but not the least, uh, maximizing efficiency and resilience in MLCI, but I would say in general in life. So I wanted to congratulate all of you. You've been through us with these five amazing days. The day number one, we learn about dreams and goals. Day number two, we learn the skill how to become effective in communication. Day number three, we learn how to build a relationship, a rapport with the clients, how to do the presentation. Day number four, we learn about marketing, how to market and use the social media and how to be there uh, presented in front of the client. 
And day number five today, we learn about efficiency and we learn how it's important to have resilience, strong mind um, and positive outlook in life in general. So that's it from our end. Dennis, please come uh, to, to the floor. I want to thank you as well for being uh, for being with us. And Armand, unfortunately, he's not here today. He's still not feeling well. But thanks a lot for being um, uh, co-host co and Sharon as well, uh, taking time to prepare the slides, prepare all these uh, nuggets of wisdom, because we all share lots of things, you know, from personal experience. And it's taken time, you know, to put all this together. And I hope that people enjoyed listening from you, from Sharon, from Armand, uh, from myself, from everybody who had the guts and shared the aha moment with everybody who were ready to um uh, to to show the exercises it's really amazing and a huge thank you for our organiz organizers uh translators the guys work for this five days 24 7 so the slides translation uh, designs put everything together it's taken lots of work and effort so i would like to congratulate all of the students to completing the task and all uh, speakers and organizers to be here with us five days dennis Something to add? Um, only that I completely and utterly join your words in every single word. And uh, again, thank you very much for being attentive listeners. And thank you very much for your feedback. And I hope that you will do your homework, although it is the last day. Nobody's going to check it. But again, remember, guys, that you are doing it for your own sake and for your own and for your team's sake as well, because your task, guys, will be to spread the word, to make sure that this knowledge goes beyond the uh, attendees that we have in our Russian, Spanish, or English rooms, and goes uh, across the borders from Australia to India, from India to Europe, from Europe to the United States and Latin America. Thank you very much. Thank you. And tomorrow um, we're waiting for you for um, one important session and a um, little subtask. So we've done now five days training. You now, you now know how to build a business entirely. So tomorrow is going to be a big presentation where Dennis um, with the Red Fat team game will present the product presentation, our, our GPC token. And then after this, we're gonna have a break and Dennis and Giovanni will do um, MLCI presentation. For those who never heard about MLCI, who wanted to start doing the business with us. So your task will be to make sure that you can invite as many new people as possible from today till tomorrow. You have um, 24 hours like left in order to get as many people as possible. And what I can promise you, if you will send people for tomorrow webinar, just only send them, send them an invitation and tell them that they need to be there because it's going to be amazing product to like launch. There is amazing opportunity there. And people who will attend the tomorrow webinar, they will love it. They will love the product, the idea, the potential. Those people who wanted to stay, they can learn about the business. And this could be the team which you will start building your empire of MLCI. All what you need to do is to invite. So let's have this little agreement between all of us in these rooms that tomorrow we're going to have the room full of new people who are looking for the opportunities, who are hungry, who's browsing this world of different companies and they don't know what to do. Maybe they're looking for extra money. Maybe they look for opportunity to be involved in some unique and meaningful project. We have it here. And tomorrow we're gonna have professional who will walk through entire presentation. You don't need to even explain it yourself or what you need to do to invite the person and let the magic happen and you will see how many of these people will come back to you after tomorrow webinar and will ask you to give them more details how to be involved in the company to become a client to become a businessman because it works this is how mlci works so that's it guys 
I wish you all the best. Thanks a lot again. And I see you tomorrow for webinar and for MLCI business training. But that's all from, from now. Five days and five skills. We've done it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.